What's up, everybody, and welcome to TinkTink.org Interviews. I'm your host, Josh Wilson, here today with David D'Angelo from Yacht Club Games, a.k.a. the company behind the indie hit Shovel Knight. How are you doing today, David? I'm good. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for coming. So what's your position at Yacht Club? Like, what do you do exactly? Uh, I mean, we're very small. We're like half a dozen people, so we all sort of do everything. But uh, the main thing I'm doing day to day is programming. Uh, so I do like I implement uh, all the gameplay stuff. I do uh, all the engine stuff, get it running on the systems. Uh, so you know, all the but, unimportant stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, we're do. I mean, we're doing. I'm doing everything from like you know yelling at artists, <laughs> the, yelling at the artists like I want it this way uh, to. Um, you know, doing like business and marketing stuff, uh, which is super fun, and, and you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. All the all random tests. Nice. So, do you find this approach of wearing a lot of hats in a company uh, more favorable to just being in like a big place and just just being the programmer, or do you like it better or worse? I mean, I like I like doing a variety of things for sure. Uh, I guess what I don't what's what's unfortunate about working at like such a small with such a small group like this is that you have to take on things like you don't necessarily like to do <laughs> right. um so like you know like doing a lot of the business like you know balancing our books and like planning for conventions and um doing interviews <laughs> you know, doing interviews is, is fine but uh, i mean like a lot of the you know, answering thousands of emails is, like, not the most enjoyable thing in the world. Um, I'd rather be working on the game all the time. Um, but when it comes to, like, working on the game, I like to do, you know, having my hand in all of it is really, really enjoyable. And, you know, programming, like, 100% of the day can get, you know, exhausting. So it's nice to have a change of pace. Right. So how did you first get into the gaming industry? Uh, I actually started I was uh, writing music and then I was told to go to LA because that's where you could you know because you could write for movies there and uh, you could be successful and do fun things <laughs> so I moved to LA and that was right when the economy was crashing and I decided hey uh, maybe I shouldn't write for music because I was trying to apply to all these studios and they were all closing um, so I decided I, you know, I went to school for computer science and music. So I said, hey, I've always wanted to make video games. And in L.A., there's a good amount of video game companies. How about I look for a video game job? And I ended up getting one at Way Forward, and worked there for uh, four or five years. All right. That's pretty awesome. All right. So how Yacht Club Games, how exactly did the company get this name? Is there any backstory behind it? Uh, I mean, it's really just like the the brainstorm brainstorming of like what we were trying to go for, which is like sort of this like playful arrogance and like uh, I don't know the ironic. If you're like looking at all the other games right now, it's like that's what all these like mobile companies should be called is something like get get give me money fast, <laughs> you know LLC. Um, yeah, so it was sort of like the uh, the irony of what with what was happening. Like, we just want to make good games, and and at the same time, we thought it was sort of like interesting how, um, like it's like it's a very playful thing to be in a yacht club, right? You're having fun, huh? right? So right. it's it meshed with like what we're <laughs> for eating caviar. And stuff. Yeah. So, so how how was the company formed? Was it just a like? Did you know the the other founders or people before and you're like hey let's let's do this or okay. yeah we all we all work together uh, way forward in various capacities um and like we so we were building basically we were making stuff on the side at way forward and eventually it got to the point where we decided hey we really want to leave and make our own company and that's what we did nice all right so for those of us who don't know about shovel knight uh can you tell us why we should buy and love it uh, Shovel Knight is a retro 2D platformer, uh, sort of in the same vein as like a lot of the NES classics, like um, Mario, DuckTales, uh, Zelda 2, uh, Mega Man, um, Castlevania. Like, name your favorite NES game. It probably feels like there's some of it in there. Um, <laughs> uh, 
And yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of fun. It's a, it's a throwback to a time where, you know, the, <laughs> the main character was the name of the game. Um, and that's sort of like the spirit, the spirit of the game is like drawing upon a lot of the, like the same emotions and feelings and joy that you would get out of those old titles. All right. So, uh, Shovel Knight had a pretty dang successful Kickstarter, you know, managed to get, you know, reach all its goals and whatnot. Uh, what would you say besides having a good game, uh, would be the keys to this, uh, the success? Uh, well, I mean, I think, I mean, one was having it, besides it being good, I guess, necessarily, like, it doesn't really matter if it's good. It matters if it's appealing, right? Right. <laughs> Uh, So I think it was appealing for a few reasons. Like one of them was like, we were going for a very Mega Man esque aesthetic and uh, you know, we have eight bosses they are all themed. um, And right around that time, you know, the last Mega Man game was canceled. Uh, You know, like KG and Afune had left Capcom. It's like, Oh my God, another Mega Man game will never happen. So I think we were just like showed up the right place at the right time. Uh, And you know, I think we, I mean, we worked really, really hard to like prove what we were doing and why it was, and why it was something you should care about. Like we went to PAX and showed it to, you know, showed the demo to tons of people. We gave it to like every YouTuber we could find so they could play it for like their fans. We gave it to every Twitch streamer we could find so they could play it for their fans. Um, you know, in general, I we worked really hard to show like this is an interesting you know, this is a game like those series that you love, like those IPs that you love, and like, you know, look at these goofy characters. Like, you're gonna want to play this. All right. Did did anybody on the team, or yeah, anybody, everybody, expect Shovel Knight to be this successful, or or did y'all love it? You're like, oh, we hope they love it too. Or did you <laughs> no, love- no. I actually wrote an article about like our first month of sales and stuff, and about what we were actually expecting, which is like for the Kickstarter, our highest hopes is that we'd get one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and so we ended up getting three hundred thousand. Um, and it was just like, I mean, we are, I mean, we were totally blown away. Um, I mean, you. Like we basically were looking at other successful Kickstarters and saying like this is the best we can do based on those. <laughs> I'm glad y'all did better. Yeah, so I mean it was really an amazing experience, and I mean even during the Kickstarter we didn't think it'd be that successful. Like you know halfway through our campaign we were only half funded, so we I mean we were scared we were even going to get funded. Right. All right. So what was the design process like? Like could you like Kind of take us through like how a, you know, a level or even a single screen was made and kind of, you know, flowed together and just feels good, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, so each each stage was sort of designed by theme, right? So we right. said, hey, we want eight stages. What they should, what what should they be? And we decided on the themes of them first to make sure they're diverse. So it's like, hey, we want a ice stage. We want a you know, lava stage, we want to stage in the sky, we want a stage that, um, you know, has lots of, like, chemistry stuff going on, <laughs> you know, like, you know, we decided all those themes, and then we took, you know, once we were, once that was decided, then we figured out the boss for that stage um, to, like, match, so, like, Mole Knight would match the, you know, lava stage. And so his stage would be, like, all about going underground because we figured out it would be, like, that's what Mole Knight's theme was, like, was digging, right? Like a mole. Um, <laughs> the dump chat. Yeah, so uh, once that was determined, sort of we'd, like, have a basic layout for the stage made. We They were all, I mean, it was sort of, it was based on, like, a Mega Man stage formula to a certain degree, which is there were... Uh, on the main path of the stage, there were typically 25 screens, uh, which is the same as Mega Man. And then we'd have, you know, for all the secrets, there would be like eight, you know, six to eight, I think, screens for secrets. Um, so we'd build out like a structure, basically, of what we thought the level would look like. So it'd be like, 
you know, here it's going to be a single screen here. This will probably be like a puzzle room. Here's going to be like a long three screen section. It'll be like action and fighting. Uh, here's like another, here's another screen. It's going to be a mini boss. Here's another three screen room. It's going to be uh, a platforming challenge, right? right? So we'd sort of lay that out and say like, does this, does this structure look like it's going to be like an interesting and fun and then once that was laid out we decided like what are those actually like what are those elements going to be like uh you know what's the mini boss like what can we do different with a mini boss that fits in with the theme you know what can what kind of platforming challenges can we have what kind of enemy new enemies can we throw here and then sort of figuring out like how those elements like we so we threw like hundreds of ideas out right and then we picked the ones that sort of like work well together in order to make sure like you can get more combinations in the level design. All right. um, and then we build out all those things and we test them and see if they're fun. And then we, you know, try to place them in fun, in fun spots and see if it works. So about how long would you say uh, it would take from uh, concept to completion to get one level made? Or did they vary? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, the game took 16 months. Um, and that's probably close to how many levels there are. So maybe a month per level. All right. That math checks out, sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, was there any uh, a lot of cut content from the game that just couldn't make it or didn't fit or anything uh, that you know anybody was sad to see go? Uh, I mean, nothing that anyone was like. So we cut a level out of the tower stages, and we did that one because we didn't really have time and two because i mean more importantly we thought i think it's going to be boring if we have another tower stage um like we thought we'd be repeating our our, our ideas rather than creating new things um so we decided sort of to throw it away um and but instead we did those like little challenge stages on the side so I, it wasn't really like we threw anything away um and then yeah, we, I mean, we had little ideas like, you know, goofy jokes or, you know, things, you know, characters and stuff like that, but nothing that we actually put in the game and took out. It was all, I mean, it's all ideas that we'll probably like do at some point in the future, <laughs> just because like we're always holding on to ideas. All right. So what are the current future plans for Shovel Knight, if there are any? Uh, well, right now we're building a bunch of updates for the game. So we're doing uh, three playable campaigns uh, for the bosses, King Knight, Spectre Knight, and uh, Plague Knight. And then we're doing a battle mode, a challenge mode, and a gender swap mode. All right. So we've got a lot of stuff coming. <laughs> cool. So Shovel Knight is a playable character in the motorcycle combat game Road Redemption. And in the <laughs> that is that's correct. <laughs> All right. And he's in the upcoming Party RTS Hex Heroes. So um, will we be seeing any other characters from Shovel Knight and Road Redemption, like Shield Knight or any of the bosses or anybody? Or, uh, or will we I see think... Shovel Knight in any other games or other game characters in Shovel Knight? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, uh, you will you will be seeing Kratos in the PlayStation version of Shovel Knight. That was just announced. Um Besides that, I don't think we'll be putting... I don't know if we'll be putting in any other characters. Um, I mean, if we get a good offer, who knows? Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, in terms of, like... Yeah, we'll, I mean, Shovel Knight will probably make it into other games. Uh, we've been a little hesitant lately because we've been putting him in a lot of games and we feel like we're over, you know? He's, like, I don't know, like a whore or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're trying to be like a little more careful with what we pick. I guess I guess to us it's really important. Like if we see a game that we like, that we think, you know, it would be helpful to like get our character in there to get that game more attention. Like we want to do that. You know, something like Hex Heroes. Like it just looked like a fun game to us, and we and we wanted them to get as much attention as possible. And if they thought putting Shovel Knight in there would, you know, would help, like we're happy to help. It's very nice. So are any talks or ideas being thrown out, just anything at all, uh, about a sequel or a spinoff or both or anything like that? I mean, we, like, 
Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about, like, doing sequel stuff, like, constantly. <laughs> we talk about all the games we want to make all the time. Uh, I mean, it's just a matter of, like, when we finish all the stuff we're doing for Shovel Knight, if we will want to make one, or if we'll want to do something completely different. I mean, I can't imagine we would leave, we would not make a second Shovel Knight. I mean, we've talked about, like, we want to we would love to do like just a straight up sequel like Shovel Knight 2 NES style or we'd love to do like you know bringing it through the years the same way the IPs were taken like a Super Shovel Knight like a Shovel Knight 64 um, okay. you know <laughs> you know like Shovel Knight Neo Geo or you know all those like, you know doing a fun you know twist on the series like figuring out how that down first mechanic works in 3D or figuring out how you know, like, what's the weird third button you add to the Super Shovel Knight that makes it, you know, like, the dash in Mega Man or, you know, the spin jump in Super Mario World. Uh, nice. So, what about a cartoon? Could we get a Shovel Knight animated series? I mean, series? yeah, I, like, that's the dream for us, getting a Shovel, like, a Shovel Knight animated series would be so amazing. I mean, really, we want, like, we want Shovel Knight to be everywhere. We want, like, your Shovel Knight Happy Meal. It's like we want you to wake up with your Shovel Knight alarm clock and, like, you know, out of your Shovel Knight, like, PJs with your Shovel Knight bed sheets and you, like, go to your eat your Shovel Knight cereal. And hey, then, if like, you have a cereal, then, you know, you've, you've, you've made it big. That's about as yeah. good as you can <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, like, it would be... I mean, that stuff is just, like, really fun to us. <laughs> I, it's like, we don't care about making money. If someone would, like, make it for free, we, we would do it. Um, All right, you, you hear that, everybody. Go and make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, like, I don't know. To have, like, physical things of Shovel Knight is so cool. And we, at, at any chance we get to do it, we want to. You should make shovels for, like, you know, hardware stores. Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be amazing. We have our, have you seen the foam shovels we have? That would be cool. Yeah, but I mean, it's foam. I can't, you know, fight. Yeah, I, mean, I know. We, I mean, we need the real thing. We, like, when you're, when you're digging, you know, potting your plants, you need to make sure you do it right. Exactly. So, um, Shovel Knight was done in an 8-bit style, you know, reminiscent of uh, old NES games. Did this, uh, I guess, limited color palette? prevent any or present any particular challenges or you know were y'all like man these are all the colors we need um i mean like yeah it's it's like uh put, having like the self-imposed uh limitations is really challenging one because it's like like this would just be a lot easier if we could just throw a bunch of explosions on the screen uh, to make it exciting right right um and two because like um I don't know, there's just a lot of challenge, and it forces you to be creative in a different way um, when you, you know, when you have to say, like, how do I make this character, you know, pop out, look interesting, look fun, you know, with three colors. Um, so, like, you know, balancing everything like that can be a, a lot of work and very tricky, you know, not saying I'm not going to throw, like, a thousand bullets on the screen because the NES couldn't do that. Um, it was really hard, and figuring out, like, how to make something fun and simple is really challenging. I mean, the whole idea of the game being based around one mechanic, you know, like the shovel, um, you know, is really tricky. And, and it's very understandable why modern games are so much more complicated, because it's so, it's so much easier to create, like, diverse... Um, engaging gameplay wh where everything is unique, right? Um, but to make something where every level you're doing the same thing, you're shoveling, you're down thrusting, or you're jumping, right? Every single level you're doing that, and nothing's changing. <laughs> so, like, to make it so that seems interesting is really challenging. Well, I mean, I guess that's where the whole, you know, good gameplay comes from, because it was fun just doing those three or four things. Well, right, but it was. I mean, we we tried to make it, it fun, but good, it could have as very well as been like monotonous and boring, and it's, and you realize you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> All right. So, um, is there any possibility that we will get a uh, level editor or any type of editor for Shovel Knight or Steam Workshop support or anything like that? Um, I don't think so. I mean, we've talked about it before. It would be, I mean, our stuff is like pretty and I'm not so friendly state for us to make it available for people to use. Um, so maybe like in a shovel night two or something, we would like plan that out more. 
Uh, but right now I don't think so. I mean, we're all like super into that though. <laughs> so it's like very, it's very frustrating to say, I don't think we're going to do it. Um, cause we want it ourselves. Like I want to see the amazing levels that people can make. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right. So, um, are there any talks, uh, amongst you and your fellow coworkers about doing a, a non shovel knight related game at the moment. Uh, I mean, we or have like any idea. kind of concrete plans. I guess. Yeah. I mean, we have ideas for them, but not, nothing like concrete. I mean, we won't start on con- like the day we finish shovel knight, uh, is the day we'll start on concrete plans for the next game. All right. So yacht club's <laughs> not going to be shovel knight all the time, all forever. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think we would get pretty burned out on it. It's like you have to... I mean, I think we could make Shovel Knight forever, but we'd have to make something else to keep the juices flowing, you know? (laughs) Right. So uh, probably the most important question ever is, will Shovel Knight become a mermaid? (laughs) I mean, it's... Who knows? Maybe Shovel Knight already is a mermaid. Maybe, maybe. So... Was that any type of teaser, or is that just, you know... No, I mean, that was just a joke <laughs> on the site. All right, just just double-checking. So, <laughs> any uh, upcoming games, uh, be it indie or otherwise, that you personally le- or are looking forward to? Oh, games I'm looking forward to. Um, let's see. I'm really looking forward to... Uh, I mean, anything Nintendo I'm always looking forward to. The new Fire Emblem I'm excited about. Uh, the, you know, like, uh, the Zelda, the Star Fox, Miyamoto games in general, yeah. <laughs> uh, get me very excited. Um, let's see, what else is, oh, you know, Blow by Cappy Games, I'm really excited about, um, what else is coming? Oh, the Blood, Bloodborne. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's a good one. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of exciting games coming out in 2015. Uh, I guess it's a, like the you know that's just enough time after the the you know, introduction of the new consoles that they're starting to finally like show off the games they've been working on in secret for so long. Yeah. So man, y'all should probably try and get Shovel Knight into the new Smash Brothers. Just saying. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I don't know how many n- emails I've sent to Nintendo asking and pleading for goofy things like that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I doubt, I doubt that would happen, but you hey, know, you know, I guess it, the, the more, the more persistent we are, the, you know, eventually they'll yield just out of, they're tired of saying no. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the power of harassment is very strong. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, anything else that you would like to talk about concerning Shovel Knight or Yacht Club or anything? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I just... I, guess, I mean, I guess thank you to all the people that have supported us and we're excited about the game and, lo- you know, love it and keep, you know, keep playing it. And, I mean, it's, that's what keeps us motivated. All right. So um, any advice for um, future game developers or coders or anybody who just wants to get into the industry in general? Uh, my advice is always the same, which is to start making games now. Um, you know, like being able to say, uh, I've made a game and show it to a company and even if it's bad if it's complete like people the company will realize hey this person is really interested in making games they're like willing to work hard do something from start to finish you know uh it really like shows um your interest like to a company that you are you know interested in making games and and you know and aren't just saying you like games and then from the standpoint of actually making it, like you get a lot of good experience out of doing that. You you get to realize all the steps in the process, like from start to finish, like, you know, trying to get people to test your game and see if they like it to, you know, actually like putting in the code, putting in the art, um, you know, seeing that process, seeing like, you know, if you're making something simple like Pac-Man, you might realize things you never knew about, like, hey, Pac-Man has like input buffering. Which, so, like, when you press right, he turns right at the next corner um, at any time, right? That's not, like, uh, something you would intuitively know is a good gameplay idea. So, like, learning those kind of things is really cool. And, um, yeah, and you might find out, hey, I don't even really like making games at the end of the day. (laughs) Uh, Because, like, once you actually start making a game, it might not be the kind of thing you like doing, right? You might realize, I like playing games, not making them. Um, So, like, getting that 
experience as soon as possible is good to know. Yeah, it can become very you know monotonous, kind of a grind there at some points. But so what yeah. you so what you're saying is your game may be trash, but as long as it's complete, it's it's good trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Like, I mean, I when I was in when I, I think in college, I started making you know like I made a snake game, I made a, like an air hockey game. And it's like I started to realize, a lot, like I learned a lot from doing those, and they're terrible, and I would, not, and I wouldn't recommend anyone play them. But like, I mean, that helped a lot for me to learn, like what goes into making a game. All right. So, um, anything you'd like to say in closing, or to the fans, or well, I think we already covered that. Just making sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good. All right. Well, everybody, since you're already here, you might as well subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to visit TinkTink.org for all of your gaming needs. Also, if you've heard of Shovel Knight and haven't played it yet, do yourself a favor and go give it a try. It's charming, it handles great, and it's worth it just for the soundtrack alone. Also, a special thanks to David for talking with us today. It's been nice talking with you, man. Yeah, thank you. No problem. All right, and this has been Josh Wilson. As always, thanks for listening to TinkTink.org interviews.